Doom 2016 is undeniable proof that there is no excuse for not being a Chad. The story brings you on a journey that not only houses religious intolerance, but also houses hordes of demons that only know violence. Fortunately, you play as 2020 waifu of the year, the Doom Slayer, and his response to their overwhelming violence is more violence. Doom Eternal is coming out next week, and before I have my panties perpetually submerged in water, I thought we may as well attempt one last challenge for this game. Can you beat Doom 2016? without taking damage. If you've ever played Doom before, then you should have quickly realized how delusional and ludicrous I am. In Doom, you face the impending inevitability that is your ass being karate clapped. But this channel is for true gamers, and those that have challenge fetishes. So get ready for this fetish tsunami. Before we dive into the run though, let's discuss the rules. Rule 1. If I even get hit once, I must reload a previous checkpoint. Rule 2. Any weapon or upgrade can be used, but no runes, such as the rich gets rich Richer rune, or the BFG infinite damage cheese. Rule 3. To keep things spicy and because I'm a masochist, we will do something I feel is only suitable for this run. Since we're playing as a Doom Slayer and he only knows perfection, I thought what a great idea it would be to get punished for every time that I mess up. Starting from the beginning of the run, every 100 checkpoint reloads will result in one paintball to the chest, forcing me to actually think and focus on how I execute certain areas. Before we embark on our erotic fanfiction, go ahead ahead and grab yourself a Trix yogurt, something to drink, and ADD medication. Maybe even if you're feeling a little manly, you'll slap that like button to support me and these crusades. Will I finally be able to achieve that secret romance option with Olivia? Will my powers as an omnipotent being be enough to carry me through this game? Let's find out. Right out of my sarcophagus, I am hit with one of my many primal instincts. Although it is more of a curse than it is a blessing, the possessed didn't see it coming, literally. You will notice throughout this run that I almost exclusively practice the art of systematic heretic extermination. I actually find this term to be an offensive way to describe non-consensual ass pounding. Either way, many Many will perish, and I hope you enjoy the ride. On this episode of Specimen of the Chadley Type, uh -huh. we are introduced to the Doom Slayer, also known as my channel member, Daft Dave one Dave here enjoys nice long talks about Taco Bell poopy butthole blowouts, and on his free time, even likes to delve into international diplomatic affairs. Now ladies, please keep those chastity belt panties on, because Doom Guy here knows not of moral authority, only of obtaining that bread. You would think that the rest of this mission should be a breeze without getting hit, but this is Doom, and you are a big dumb idiot for thinking that. Just the tutorial level alone brought me great many sad. With 14 resets in just the first area, the realization that this run was going to be straight gerbil dick was already starting to creep on me, but I wasn't a little bitch. Okay. After taking on the imps, or should I say simps, that were coming for my DMs, it was time to bring my crusade of damageless testosterone to the surface and continue the fight. On the surface of Mars, surprisingly, this all turned out to be a better and more enjoyable experience, only because now I could take the demonic turbo dicking under the crimson Martian sky. I was really out here thinking that this challenge would be easy, or at least the first half of it, but god damn, I was wrong. What the fu- Every f***ing time! Oh, oh my god! The possessed soldier was introduced to me here, and that basically meant that I now had to deal with the fireballs being thrown at me, and these fuck trying to pound me in also. But with a bit of perseverance and luck, I was able to maneuver the arena, and break their ankles with all my juking. Even with grenades finally in my possession, this level was still a giant fissure in my sphincter. No matter my actions, I would be hit by some sort of imp fireball or random bullet. I was quickly discovering that my mentality of living fast and eating ass was just not plausible this run. I had to take things down a notch, and methodically plan out my every action. It was time to discover the cause of the current spread of hideous deformed mouth breathers. No! With a bit of careless parkour and meeting with the possessed jihad exploders, I was on to the next room, aka checkpoint loading simulator. After reloading the checkpoint so many times, you eventually develop a tactic, and that tactic is not being bad. It is common public knowledge that imps were put into this world to give you a few extra inches on your penis. Just a pebble to the forehead and they are basically dead, but this run, they will be our bane. Their long range fireball attacks are 80% of the reason why I need to reload these checkpoints. 
For succeeding and surviving the Russian gulag of enemies, I was gifted the chainsaw. This weapon allows for a one-shot kill on most demons, but the downside is you have to be a pube hair away from them. Being that close to an enemy is basically a death wish, and will only probably work like 20% out of 5% of the time. This run was starting to turn into evidence for a domestic abuse case, but even though she beats me over and over, I couldn't seem to let Doom go. Back out on Mars, I was given an assault rifle, and this made things a lot easier. With my range, I was able to give vasectomies to these demons for free, and with ease from a distance. These vile and degenerate creatures have overrun my holy dojo, and I wasn't going to let these heathen do such a thing. With a bit of epic gamer skill and terrible aim, I rendezvoused with the robo she, him, her. After speaking of the horrors that took place on Mars and giving me the rundown on the tactical nuke that was inbound, he kindly loosened the straps on my helmet like any caretaker would, and I was ready for the next level. Before we continue though, let's sew together a quick plan this run. Operation My Little Brother deleted my hentai collection, so I deleted his spine is now in full effect. Our main goal this run is to stop these demons from stealing our shekels and taking our Mars. These blasphemers and degenerates are not allowed to do such a thing when I am currently on the surface of this planet. To even begin though, you need to make sure you have your hot dog crucifix and phallic object next to your computer. The demons are afraid of getting dicked down, so just the phallic object being near you should be enough. Keeping a distance, using long range weapons, and taking it slow is a must. Our holy grail this run will be decoy grenades grenades and the BFG. The thick boy replicas keep the simps distracted as you proceed to abort their lives into the nearest tomb with a single shot from the big fucking gun. What's that dildo for? <sighs> My safety. Now get out of here. I'm doing God's work. Now thank you for listening to my TED talk and let's get back to the run. With blood pressure on the rise, it was time to meet the creatures that will surely tear me a new asshole. Actually, spoiler alert, they will definitely tear me a new asshole. The beginning of the level was a breeze. I found a little scope for my assault rifle, met a gentleman that was kind enough to give me a hand, and removed the batteries out of a couple of demonic Game Boys. Life was pretty good, until I remembered my strange obsession. Oh shit, um, god damn it, uh, give me a second. Fuck. Okay. Alright. Alright, this is perfect. Perfect. Perfect! The roid rage demon wasn't actually the problem. The problem was all around me. How foolish and imprudent I am to think that these dudes alone would be my only nuisance this run. I was the product of experimentation for these demons, slapping me around like the high school whore, but god damn I was obsessed. I loved it. I absolutely loved having to restart every confrontation. Woo! I loved it, baby! Yes! Every confrontation with the Roid boys actually went well. I smacked them up and then experienced a therapeutic experience that is getting damaged by the stupidest thing in the goddamn world. Though, believe it or not, I actually have exceptional immunity to perpetual sodomy and misery. So after failing what must have been 33 times, eventually I was able to make it out thanks to my overwhelming authority over these demons. This area was not only making my dick dry heave, but giving me a massive migraine. But after formulating a plan and a bit of luck, I was able to make it through and get to the final encounter of the level. With my sphincter clenched as tight as the pants on an overweight human, I actually made it through the final encounter without taking any damage. I know that my elite gamer skills and extraordinarily good looks are a little too much, but don't let that distract you from the fact that Olivia looks like the kid who invented the Fortnite flossing dance. Our next task was to enter the Argent facility and destroy the Argent Tide Pods. A little bit of delving into Mario's wet dreams with all this platforming and obtaining a free rocket launcher left behind by the Doom Gods, I was ready for my first group of enemies on this level. For some reason, this took the longest out of every encounter thus far. Try after try, I threw myself at these bad boys like a simp trying to get into their favorite streamer's DMs. Three whole Infinity Wars later, and some depressive baby rage. Oh my god, please, please. I actually just shot my... I was able to make it out and onto some more painstaking gameplay. The next area housed another demonic portal in which demons congregated around. Little did they know that utter and complete ass annihilation due to perpetual sodomy by the likes of my weapons was going to be on their schedule today. I was very fortunate to actually complete this part in only one try, but foolish me should have known that damaging the sacred engineer would curse me in the eyes of Allah, leading me to countless pointless deaths and raising that checkpoint number. But perhaps you have not seen them. Um 
someone with a very funny gameplay. After destroying two Argent Tide Pods and dealing with another demon uterus, I found the super shotgun. You know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Which is actually what my father told me when he let me know that I was adopted. But I can't front with you guys, I lied to you. This thing was about as useful as a soggy cheese doodle. And even a soggy cheese doodle would intrinsically be more useful to me in the long run. Although the next area led to many reloads, I was able to blow through the hordes and the summoner. And this all led to the destruction of the last Tide Pod. My work here was done, and I was ready to head to the Argent Tower. On the way to your destination, keeping your distance from Team Rocket and Blasting them down is quite easy, especially with an assault rifle scope. In the sure event that you potentially get hit during this part, remember, you should feel bad about yourself, and you will never be one tenth of the gamer that I am. Copping a fresh new look was important for my potential date with Olivia, so quick shout out to LeBron James, who traveled to Mars long before the attack so that he could hook me up with off-white Nike Air Force Ones. With my new shoes on, I trekked across a war zone and embraced many loading screens, but I guess it just wasn't enough. It looks like we failed our objective. Olivia waddled off with her Argent accumulator and it was clear that she wanted to die. Listen guys, the lesson of the story is, love is like frying food shirtless. You really never know when it'll hurt. I needed to hunt down Olivia. I wasn't going to let her get away with this. The Doom Slayer is renowned for his revelry and non-belligerent actions, so this threat was all going to be settled as peacefully as possible. With recently acquired lock-on mod for my rocket launcher, I was able to bring death to the vermin without much of a problem. Though this was a big W in my books, there was no time to celebrate. The thick boy extravaganza royale had started, and this battle royale wasn't your typical. I was now at 208 reloads, and every single time I had to reload a checkpoint, I died a little on the inside. These thick boys didn't dodge so well, and... <laughs> Uh, nor, nor did I. With difficulty rising and more enemies being added to the equation, this wasn't no Paw Patrol on a roll gameplay. Learning how to move effectively and keeping your distance without getting hit is the difference between eternal suffering and decisive victory. Throwing myself at this again and again was not fun, and the thick boy extravaganza cutscene was starting to eat into my autism. Make it stop. Please. 53 reloads and a couple of rages later, I began scaling the Argent Tower. The hordes of enemies thankfully weren't bad along the way. I just had to deal with some egregious platforming. But eventually, I was at the top and ready to reunite with Olivia. You're gonna start quaking, buddy. You little nuts are gonna be quaking. The decrepit being that probably sexually identifies herself as a Starburst was ready to end it all. Thinking I wasn't wearing protection, she hit her 25 kill streak and was ready to bring me down with her. I will admit, I was a little worried this part would soil the run. The ending sequence of this mission has a portal to hell ripped open, and things go bad faster than a priest getting caught peeping into the children's restroom. If I get hit for mistake right before the portal opens, the whole level will need to be restarted. With ubiquitous danger seething around me, and odds not even close to being in my favor, your favorite Olympic esports athlete did it, and it was time to bring this crusade to the depths of hell. I was now on demonic turf, and these demons were going to need life alert after I was done with them. With the Goss rifle in my possession, my courageousness now rivals that of the love that is baked into Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies. I felt unstoppable. Just a bit of shooting from a distance and playing safer than normal meant victory for the Doom Slayer. I mean, don't get me wrong, I am ashamed of having to play like a festering septic tank, but even though I'm a shit player, I got the job done. I was sitting at 248 resets so far. My goal was to try to beat the game with only 400. Even though that was a bit far-fetched, you can bet your sweet nipples that I was still going to try. Kaka demons arrived to attempt to ruin my day, but I quickly reminded them that they were were forced to pay me, their benevolent leader, a one-time payment of their lives, and that is exactly what they did. A tactic would probably be smart for this run, but honestly, I was just swinging it and hoping I would make it out on top. That mindset was kind of working, and everything was going neato mosquito, until I remembered that the barons of hell were on this level. My first encounter with them led to me resetting my game 32 times, literally almost 30 minutes of just me getting Wendy's 4 for 4 by these barons. Not even my OnlyFans page had this much f***ing. After constantly getting rammed and struggling to maintain sobriety, I had a quick burst of luck and was able to make it through. This luck was kind enough to actually carry over into the final fight of the level. If for some goddamn reason you feel like tapping into your inner autism and wish to join me on this challenge, I'll tell you how I got past this encounter. Simply just running through the arena and chainsawing a few roid boys will start the horde of shekel goblins. From here, you need to prepare your soy boy meters and strap on your diapers, because we are going to be doing the opposite of what a chad should do. 
running back and doing a little parkour leads you to an area where you can safely kill off the horde from a distance. After picking them off, you not being in the actual arena despawns the barons that should spawn there and lets you get away with a free W. It was now time to head back to Mars and trust me, I know that this is going to be hell. You guys get it? I'll give you all a moment to laugh quickly. <laughs> I know that was a pretty... Okay, I'll stop now. My first trip to hell resulted in an extra 102 deaths, and I was now sitting at 350 resets. My plan of only getting 400 was starting to seem ah! dire. There wasn't much that happened on this level really. An emergency minigun was left behind just in case of demonic invasion, and I began ripping and tearing through anything that was in my path. Being able to pass the first group of enemies without taking damage got me slightly chubbed up, but my meeting with the pinkies, that shit had me feeling euphoric. Just like when you get away with stealing your mom's credit card for more V-Bucks. I took them out with not even a bit of effort in my second try. With enough resets, time, sweat, and cum pumped into this run, I was starting to adapt to my enemies. I just want to remind you guys that a great soldier has passed on this day. Timmy the Pinky was audacious enough to attempt groping me. This ultimately led him to his demise. At least he died doing what he loved. As a usurper with international and geopolitical power, I continued on my conquest across Mars. At this point, not even a Baron of Hell could stop me. This level brought me only 16 resets, and in no time I was ready to continue on to my next challenge. But this time, I needed to find someone special. I was on the search for love. This beautiful being here had been conducting research on an inanimate object that was going to bring me many nuts. The second best invention next to the fleshlight. She was perfect and god Damn, guess what? She doesn't even Photoshop her Tinder pictures. With my sexual tension graciously funding my strength to push forward, I destroyed everything in my path and only had to reset four times. Hayden slapped a tether on me without notice, and you know what? I'm starting to think these robo people are kind of fishy. I mean, not to be racist towards the robots or anything, I really don't want their community canceling me for this one, but hear me out. First, the demonic invasion, and now touching me without my consent. I don't know, man. Kind of fishy. With thick little mama's low location now appearing on my Google Maps, it was time to make my way there. After a brief rodeo with a couple of checkpoint reloads and pointless deaths, I was finally able to get my hands on the actual waifu of the century, the BFG. Many have failed to properly wield this weapon of mass destruction, but those children clearly didn't read the fine print that says this thing was only made for adult hands, like the Doom Slayers, and I guess, Dwayne The Rock Johnsons. No, that's a lot of damage! With this weapon, my power was now overwhelming. The final part of the level involves an annoying horde, but with a bit of learning enemy spawns and using the BFG to dick down these enemies harder than a cuck's wife, it was all easily doable. The reason I like Doom is because Doom really makes you feel like Doom. Things were starting to wrap up and Hayden sent me to nominate a couple of demons with the Darwin Award. It was cold down here. Narrow hallways and the usual. Shekel goblins waiting around every corner. All of this of course was ameliorated by the fact that there was a free Fortnite shield potion waiting for my taking, which by the way is literally useless to me this run. My task involved finding the helix stone so that I could end this plague once and for all. I sang my lead lullaby to these poop socks and was clearing through quite nicely. Morale was up. I had a group of weapons I called my best friends and I even caught an episode of How I Met Your Mother while I was playing. This was a pretty good day until id Software decided to play Chad Patty Cake with my face and literally ruin me and my egomaniacal ways. The next next room was painful. These demons were taking upper deckers in my master bedroom bathroom and there was no way that I could do anything about it. Even with the decoy thrown in there, I was positive this was the end. Almost every time I tried, the enemy spawned in sporadic places. My boner for justice and constantly longing for purpose won't ever be silenced. I knew that I could do this if I put my head to it. After 2 hours and literally 86 resets later, I had done it. And all I needed to do was put some testosterone into that bad boy. I was currently at 466 resets and had a boss fight coming up here shortly. Have I had enough training to take him down? Have persona I truly accepted the Doom Slayer as my persona? Or was I going to falter like the loser that I was? I walked into his Thunderdome and that big hulking hunk of a man known as the Cyber Demon picked me up and put me in his arms. I have waited many years for a man of this caliber to touch me the way he did. Though not everything lasts forever and fortunately for me, there are no Geneva conventions for hulking thick boys that are about to get taught a lesson. Only two resets the first 
first phase and three the second, but I did it. I beat him in only five resets. If you actually have your arsenal, this boss fight is a joke. Just a bit of careful attention to his attacks and they are nothing to the likes of Doom Guy's lead lullaby. The intoxicating sensation of destroying that heaping piece of meat felt great. With him dead, it was time to return to hell once again and locate this game's version of the cringe twins and retrieve the crucible. Our stay here in hell is pleasant and I more than suggest it. No coronavirus pandemic and tax evasion is a common norm. I was now at 513 resets and nearing the end of this godforsaken run. I was pumped to finally get this run over with until this very area sent specimens of the demonic type to give me a therapeutic experience that I had once never asked for. Another 30 minutes and 34 resets, I killed the final two barons and I was now put on trial. Trial for the crimes that I had committed down here in hell. If I can make it through this one, the run is basically mine. This creature is the hell guard, the product of a failed abortion and a titan standing in the doomslayer's path. Only my third try in and I may as well just call myself noose because I necked him without even trying. The cringe twins took the stage next and my only tip for this demonic threesome is to just focus some mage and hit his crit spot every single time. Once you trigger the stun animation, switch to your minigun and drop that fat damage on his forehead. This last fight was a nice little cocktail of simplicity and molesting my space bar, but in due time, I had done it. The hell guards were killed without taking any damage. The crusade wasn't over yet though. We still had one more boss to deal with. So buckle up boys, hop in the magic school bus, and let's go on one more field trip. The plan was put together and it was time to save the homie Vega. The mad lad has helped me through so much and I had to do this just for him. The plasma weapon of mass destruction called the BFG is an inhumane way to take these creatures lives, but hey, I won't support using it, but I will recommend it. The thing was a vasectomy machine and all that had come into contact with me quickly regret doing so. The final encounter on this level did make me want to commit toaster and bathtub, especially since just getting past this part got me to 603 resets, but as the Nelson Mandela of gaming, I always find a diplomatic solution to the hardest of situations. Vega was put onto a hard drive and it was time for one last journey into the depths of hell to finally finish this off. Entering this dojo of pain felt so bad, but so goddamn good at the same time. I've spent a total of 25 hours on this run so far and was beyond ecstatic to finally put on that belt and achieve my victory. For time's sake on this video, I'll keep the boring details out and cut straight to the nudes. This last level was quite easy. With all the power-ups and hefty amount of BFG ammo, I was able to blaze through every single encounter. After disabling all of the wells with the crucible, it was time to give Megamind some Mega Dome. I was at 638 resets so far, and at this point I was ready to finally wrap things up. I dropped down into the arena and instantaneously took back the romance option I potentially wanted with Olivia. I mean honestly, do you blame me? I don't think any amount of rule 34 could potentially prepare me for this final fight. The mastermind wasn't too difficult to deal with. Once you spawn, collect your 3 BFG shots in the arena and then proceed to unload your ass onto Olivia. It took me 7 tries, but eventually, I finally did it. This boss fight's difficulty was sadder than an orphan with an incest fetish. And here's to hopes that the boss fights in Doom Eternal will be a lot better. It was done. 645 resets and I was now free. You can beat Doom 2016 without taking damage. I I honestly wouldn't wish this challenge upon even the most hideous of mouth breathers out there. Being an incessant migraine, I can safely say that this run was far more annoying and tedious compared to the Power Glove run. Thank you for coming to watch, and if you enjoy my content and what I do here, go ahead and BFG that like button. Maybe even if you want to have a chance of going out on a date with me, you'll subscribe and hit that bell notification too. Now I must deliver to the people of the internet. <laughs>